Hi everybody, it's Andrea. Welcome back to the channel if you are a previous visitor or subscriber. And hello if you're new and you've never been here before. I hope you enjoy the video and will consider subscribing to the channel. Sorry, the light's blinding me. It's a different. There we go, that's better. So as you know, we're working the whips and we're trying to get rid of all the whips I've got by the end of the year. There are quite a few. Um, I am finishing some of them off camera, but just because... I am but today I started this one I won in spooklets last year before Christmas I never finished it so, it's just typical and it was this one so I thought I would continue with this now we'll probably use some glitter as well I'm going to be using uh, mostly the Windsor and Newton pens I think I'm gonna give her bright pink hair so I'm going to use the uh, neon, which is a like, lovely pink. And I like to go mad with these with different colours for various things. So first of all, how are you all? I hope you are all well and keeping yourself uh, nice and busy and happy and all that. Yeah, like that colour. And um, yeah, it's all good. So we're all all right here, just mooching along, doing what we've got to do. I did put last week's kind of shut up late. I was uploading it and didn't realise, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that I realised I hadn't actually made it live. So I do apologise that it was late. This one you'll be getting pretty much straight after. It's just uh, me having one of those funny five useless minutes, but there you go. So. Works busy, which is good. Keeps us going. Get the money in. Uh, Jennifer's fine. She's at school today, so she's uh, happy. We're going to go to Greg's and get some donuts later. She likes the, the round one with sprinkles. Hopefully they will have some of those. I prefer a, a lemon muffin myself, but I love lemon. Uh, Paul's downstairs working. He needs to be working to about five o'clock. Zed is around somewhere. She's fine. What have I been up to in the last week since I made the last video? Uh, what have I been up to? We went out to lunch for Mother's Day, which was really nice. Um, yeah, that was very nice. I had Sam and Wellington. It was lovely. Um, there was three mothers there. My, me, my mother and Paul's mum. So that was good. And my dad came as well. And he paid for most of it, although Paul paid for all the drinks. It was really nice to get out like that. Then, uh, what else have we done? Not a lot, because obviously we did our shopping on Saturday. Mother's Day, Paul took Jennifer to football. I didn't go. I just stayed at home, chilled out and watched some YouTube. Some Finders Beepers History Seekers, my fav one of my favourite channels. I've also been watching... Um, Lazy Masquerade, uh, which is a good uh, channel about um, weird things, true crime and stuff like that. Yeah, fascinating horror. Again, that's usually about disasters. I've been watching that rail man on TikTok who does rail disasters and rail stuff. I love all that. Um, all the colouring stuff as per normal when I get a chance. Um, but I haven't done any reading videos because I really haven't read very much. I know I haven't done a reading wrap up for January and February. And to be honest, I haven't, I've only read three books so far in March. So I might just try and do one big reading wrap up at the end of March for the first quarter of the year. And then depending on how much I read in the following months, I'll do it. I wouldn't say I was in a reading slump. Now, most people who read a lot would say they're in a slump because they're not reading a lot. I'm not. I've just been doing other things because I've got so many other things and hobbies that I do. So I've got my Marilyn collection hobby and my making TikTok. So that sometimes uh, involves um, researching, which wouldn't be reading a whole book, but it'd be pulling a volume out and having a look uh, for information on a particular topic and making a video about it. Um, obviously, colouring is another one of my main one. There's my Marilyn News Archive and Scrapbooking, which I've been doing. I have got a Wizard of Oz diamond art painting. I've only done a little bit of that, but I, I do want to do some more of that soon. 
Um, so I'm one of those people, I'm constantly busy. I, 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 I just don't get chance to be bored. Uh, and sometimes when I stop doing stuff, I just sometimes just like to listen to silence or some music. I sit there and daydream, listen to the rain if it's raining, like last night it was raining. I also play games on my phone. Who doesn't? Re read Reddit, watch TikTok. I'm liking the makeup videos. Um... Yeah, just doing all sorts. Although when I do makeup, since I've had the Botox, I just look like a Disney viewing all the villain all the time. I do not care. I love it. I'd happily be a Disney villain. Villains are the best parts, anyway. So yeah. So while well, I say I've only read three books, I've still read three books. I've just not. I'm. I'm also reading other books. I'm just not focusing on that because I've been doing some of my other hobbies. Obviously, I like to play with Jennifer as well, so sometimes we'll sit at the big table, dinner table, and get one of her, her board games out and play that. Sometimes we'll sit in colour together. We've got our Easter colouring book we're sharing. Uh, Paul's coloured in it, and myself and Jennifer have both coloured in it. Uh, usually, if Jennifer and me are colouring it, we do it together, so she'll do a little bit, and then I'll do a little bit, and, and so on, and it's really nice. We enjoy doing it together which is the main thing and she's such a happy little girl so so oh, here comes the cat so after this afternoon that's what the door creaking that's the cat opening it and coming in bless her she's a funny thing i watched darkland again the other day which is um, that true crime in wales um, murder stories. There is another one called Cold Case which we haven't watched yet that's on a different channel but we might try and watch that tonight. We watched the movie last week. Was it last week we watched the film? Yeah Sully. We watched the film Sully with Tom Hanks about the landing of the plane on the Hudson which I really really enjoyed. It wasn't a hugely long film but it was really really good. Excuse me. Um, yeah, we really enjoyed that film. Paul enjoyed it as well. And we just um, sat and watched it and really, really enjoyed, enjoyed it. So, yeah. So we've got some other films to watch. We like watching films. And of course we've got the um, the TV programme, so I'm going to try and watch that tonight. And Once we get Jennifer to bed, it's not the sort of thing that uh, is suitable for five-year-olds. So we try and get her to bed and watch stuff. I said we watched oh, Finders Beepers last week. It was absolutely freaky. We was watching that. And they got their dog, Bear, with them. I think it's Matt's dog. And they put a camera and a torch on, on the dog. Um, and he's got his own channel called Beeper Bear. And what they do is they go around and film the explore from the dog's point of view. So he's just usually running around, his ears are flapping, he's shaking and probably trying to shake the flipping camera off. But, you know, it's quite funny watching this, this dog. And on this particular episode, he was acting ever so strange, running around, going upstairs. And he even started barking, which he never does. He never barks. Um, he's always really quiet. That would be the blue one. Uh, they don't think anything of it. And they go upstairs and they're, they're having a look round. Well, suddenly they hear this noise. It sounds like somebody running down the stairs. And they think, oh my God, there's somebody in the house. They go downstairs. They can't find anybody. The person's obviously left. And then what happens is they go and look at the dog's footage there. And in the little bit that they look at, they can see a hand under the bed and potentially a part of a face. It's very hard to see. But then when they, you go and watch the dog's channel, because we went and watched the dog's channel just to see what the dog actually saw. You see in that part of the footage, yes, you do see a hand of a person and you do see a part of their face and they've got a hoodie pulled over their face. But earlier in, in that section of the dog, he runs around the other side of this bed and you can clearly clearly see somebody lying under the bed you can see the top half they're wearing a purple or maroon um t-shirt or polo shirt they've obviously pulled the hoodie up over the head so that nobody can see them and they've got 
grey trousers on and black and white trainers it's so clear to see so there was somebody up there now more than likely it was a squatter that had um, got in either the same way they did or through a broken window because there was a broken window open window there that, they, that this person could have got in via and they they were quite creeped out by it to be fair and who wouldn't be but then to be fair as an urban explorer when you go into these places this is the sort of thing you've got to expect that there may well be somebody squatting there there may be you know there may be security on site some places do have security on site so yeah but it was just so very, very funny that they found this person under the bed. It was, oops, just on the top of that pen. Where's it gone? There it is. It was bizarre. Of course, I think that person was probably more scared than they were um because they had a dog with them so they thought perhaps it's security perhaps it's somebody really um nasty coming for me and so on so they obviously uh they they legged it basically um which is fair enough i don't blame that person but it could have been quite dangerous it could have been a you know a gang of drug dealers doing a deal or something you just don't know but they weren't the same after that I, and I do wonder how they're gonna cope in the next episode it's gonna be so funny see how they manage after last week's but you know I mean they've had weird things happen before um they end up on another channel called slapped ham which i also watched a clip of theirs did because uh, they were the only people in this building and they were and, and a shadowy figure passed across the top of the stairs they ran up after it there was nowhere for it to go and there was nobody there so of course that's kind of weird is it not and so they you know they and they have met other urban explorers in buildings while they've been looking as well so it is not like they're the only people they you know they they have met other people while they've been doing it but this is the first time that they've had this happen they've been chased by security they've been arrested <laughs> it's one of the things that come with the territory now in the uk <clears throat> being arrested for uh, for that it, it, it's not arrested in the sense that you're going to have a record they're just escorted from it's not arrested as such you're escorted from the premises by the, the police because in the uk trespass is not a criminal offense unless it's on crown property or or um like um an raf for a, an army base a defense base a nuclear power station even a disused one or disarmed you know a shut down one it, it comes from so for instance if i went into an abandoned house or shop in Newport, risk of Cardiff. It would be trespass, but it's not criminal trespass. If I was to go onto an old RAF base that's still owned by the government, that would be criminal trespass because it could be a breach of um, national security. Um, but generally, most buildings, even just used police stations and courthouses, are not criminal uh, criminal trespass it's, it's, it's a civil it's what's basically called a civil offense which means they escort you off the premises they notify the owner of the property so they can come and secure it um and they can then decide whether or not they want to p pursue a civil case against you um most people would bother because of the cost involved and the general consensus with urban explanation is that you um you don't break in um you, you don't do anything they, they do have a saying and i'm trying to think of it and i can't think of it offhand it will come to me in a bit um then you don't break in you use accessible points so if somebody's previously broken in and it's been left open or it's been um left unsecured for whatever reason then it's fair game you can go into it it's trespass, but it's not breaking an entrance, so it's not criminal. If, of course, you break a door down to get in somewhere, that is criminal. But it's not 
trespass is not criminal generally in this country. Um, so if I, I went and there was a, an abandoned shop and the window was broken, I, I could go in there or if the front door was open or there was a second storey window I could climb up to that was open and accessible, I could get in through there or a basement windows been left open. It's not classed as breaking and entering because you're not breaking, you're entering but you're not breaking. Um, so it's not classed as criminal, it's civil. So it's very rare for those to prosecute just because of the cost. Me, I'd be more likely to ring up someone and say, look, did you know this building's got an open point? Do you want to seal it off to stop um, squatters or drug dealers or even just vandals getting in? Um, I wouldn't want to stop uh, urbexes because I must admit, I love watching them and I love looking at photographs by urbexes. I have done a bit myself. Not much, but I have done a bit. Um, and I do find it fascinating. Uh, but you're more likely to run into, probably most likely run into another urban explorer to be fair, but you could run into somebody else. And so it is quite funny when you get security chasing you or police chasing you. And they just want to make sure the building's secure. They just want you off site. They, they're they not, they're not going to prosecute you generally. Um, but of course there's a lot of vandalism goes on in these places, which is such a shame because some of these places have been left and it's, the reason they get damaged is because of the urban explorers. And the urban explorers go in with the premise of take only photographs, kill only time, leave only footprints. That is the urban exploration creed. So you, you only take photographs or video at the site. You don't take anything away from that uh, that location. So you don't, because that would be stealing, which would be a criminal offence. So you, you take any photographs. You don't kill anything on the premises like people or animals. You're killing time. That's all it is. And you're only leaving behind your footprints, if that. So you're not leaving any damage, graffiti or waste. And they don't in general. The majority of them don't. Now, of course, you're always going to get someone who is a bit silly and some of them do put their their logos everywhere. If they've got a YouTube channel, they might stick stickers up. Um, I think Finders Peepers did for a while and then they stopped. They, they, they've changed a lot of their modus operandi to make sure they're complying with the law properly. Um, which is wonderful because I, do, I don't want them getting cancelled or anything. And they made it into the press recently with an exploration of an abandoned field and house but they didn't go in the house just the field because that field was full of, of um, very very old and very rare cars some of them there was a model t there it was wrecked but it was a model t so it was fascinating to see it was a, a left hand drive model t american car absolutely fantastic to see even though it wasn't in the best shape so you've got all this going on and i have um i do love a bit of urban x myself so I do like to watch it. And they were actually in there yelling, we're not here to hurt you, we're just urban explorers, we're just having a look round. So to, but, but by this point that person had already left. So I hope that person's safe. Um, they obviously didn't mean them any harm because they didn't try and attack them, they didn't try and hurt them. They just ran, they were probably terrified. So I'm hoping they, they were all right and found somewhere to sleep. I, I do think it was generally somebody who's um, homeless, who just made their way in that house that night to, to knuckle down sleep. I don't think they were somebody there necessarily permanently trying to squat there. But yeah, it, it's awful to think. They terrified this poor person. But that's one of the things you can have to. One of my favourite urban explorers is an American who doesn't have a YouTube channel. You never see his face, or very rarely and he goes by the name of Mr Motts. He does have his name on his website um, but he his photographs are so stunning and you can actually buy his photographs he does sell them. Uh, I've got the silver one still here yeah that's fine um, and his website is called opacity.us so o-p-a-c-i-t-y opacity or opacity.us um, if you just type in Opacity Urban X, you, you'd find him. And his site is absolutely amazing. It is full of fantastic photographs. He travels the world. Most of it, of course, is going to be America because he lives in America. 
but his photographs are absolutely stunning. I got the idea for a novel from one of them. I've not written it, but it just the photographs are so good. You get oh, I'm gonna might have to go and look at him later. I think because I have to think his site is absolutely fantastic and he deserves a lot of kudos for what he does he was the first one i discovered when i started looking into urban exploration there's also the 28 days later urban explorer uh forum which is still going um i know a lot of forums have closed down uh forums don't seem to be much of a thing anymore which is i think is a shame because i quite like the forums i know one of the photography forums or talk photo the photography forum closed down which was a shame but i do like them it's probably the cost of running it to be honest um, uh, there's, there's a Jack the Ripper one, I am a member of that, um, I get, oh, I'm not showing you what I'm doing, there is the Urban X one, I'm a member of that, uh, and so on, but yeah, so Finders Beepers are really good, there are some other, other good Urban Explorers on YouTube, but I find some of them just take themselves too seriously, some of them mess, mess around, some of the filming's not up to what I would call uh, snuff, it's not good enough for what I want to see, but I do find that with finders beepers, they don't take themselves too seriously. They are there to, yes, they love to explore, and they do love to. Let's have this one. Um, mess, you know, they love to explore. They love to have a look at everything, especially photographs and books and things like that. Which I love old photographs, and I'm rambling, but I don't think that's what I'm here for. And um, so they they do that and then but they don't take it themselves too seriously they will have fun not so much this week because obviously like i said they were absolutely terrified by this other person being in the building but normally you know and he did wear did do it at one point uh andy he will wear hats that he finds in there he's put on dresses that they found in properties before now he'll strip off and put a dress on um oh, he's so funny and they're just crazy people they, they are they have so much fun like i said they got the dog with them when it's safe to do so they take the dog and they put the put the camera on the dog as well so you can go and watch urban expression from a point of view of a dog i mean come on who doesn't want to see that sort of thing it's, it's just absolutely fantastic i absolutely love it i just you know it is amazing um to see that you know if i wanted to look at serious urban photographs um i would go to Ober city or sometimes to the like i said 28 days later website so they, they are my recommendations for urban exploration so finders beepers adam market spores can be quite good but he's kind of he tends to be going down a supernatural type of thread at the moment which is okay but it gets a bit boring but his aren't too bad either um so adam mark Explorer Jake is quite good on YouTube as well. He's from Manchester. He's quite good. And then you've got, um, like I said, Finders Beepers and Opus City for photo uh, photographs. Also the, like I said, the um, uh, um, 28 Days Later forum. Join that. It doesn't cost anything to join. Not at all. You can buy a premium membership. I don't know what it gives you because I've never really looked into it because I'm quite happy with the the free one. Um, but Opus City is, quite, is a very good one as well. And it is just all fun. Um, and they're preserving history because these houses, these buildings, they're not going to be there for that long. They're either going to fall down or they're going to be knocked down at some point. <laughs> So for me, I, and I do love history and I love the thought of protecting history where we can and, and that is what a lot of these places are trying, to, people are trying to do. We're preserving the history in photographs because things change so quickly and things get knocked down. So, you know, I mean, I know on one of the new websites people are posting photographs of the old pool and leisure centre because that's going to be torn down. Now that was only built in the 80s but um, obviously it shut down uh, over Covid, was used as a Covid vaccination centre and it would cost a lot more money to fix the pool and the roof and all the work that he's doing to bring it up to 21st century standards than it would just to knock it down and start again. But that's the thing, we don't build things to last 
these days like they did in the Victorian ages a lot of those buildings could be still standing and in a lot of cases in Britain are not all of them some of them have been knocked down but not all of them so for instance the school I went to has closed down and they were going to demolish it to build housing however that plan fell through now they're going to demolish the modern parts of the school which aren't particularly aesthetically pleasing they're just all square boxes um, with windows and they're going to use the original Victorian part of the building or what we called a block as a learning centre for vulnerable adults and children and I think it's a wonderful thing so they're keeping the old building they're just going to refurbish it they're going to modernize it um, the library is going to be in exactly the same place the library was which I think is fantastic it's going to have a new sports area and everything the car park is going to be uh, where the tennis courts were the strange thing is I've had dreams over the years when I've driven to Pont Neuf Comprehensive School as if I was going to school and obviously I didn't drive in school we don't over here we don't start driving until we're 17 and all the times I've dreamt that the parking area has been on the tennis courts which is where it is going to be which I think is a little bit on the freaky side a little bit of a premonition there on my part but yeah so they're keeping the old Victorian building and they're just going to turn it into a more modern they're gonna upgrade it and turn it into a modern learning center for vulnerable people which I think is marvellous. I think that's exactly what they should do with it and it made me very happy when I read that notice outside there when I went up there for my my Covid vaccine which was I think my third one. So yeah so it's all good news there with that. Makes me very happy. I mean I didn't have a good time at school I was bullied relentlessly but I'm, I still would hate to see the whole of it knocked down. I mean the some of the buildings yeah I could see they're not worth repairing but that old Victorian building is beautiful um, when I was there the lights were still on um, the front door was open they've now padlocked it back up I'm glad to say to stop more vandals getting in um, probably because of this new plan which I am glad of uh, but the lights were still on in the home ec area which was so weird I was looking through the windows there there is a video of that on here it's one of the weekly vlogs um, you'd have to look back for it. I know I haven't done a weekly vlog for a while. I start doing them and I forget and then it's a couple of days later I think oh I haven't done the weekly vlog and I'm like well that was a bit stupid wasn't it woman? Oh dear me. I'm like that sometimes. It does happen. I'm nearly finished now. I'm going to finish this probably downstairs and use some paint on the background. Some metallic paint but I'm going to put some glitter on first so don't panic. We're not quite there yet. There we go. Right. That's that bit. All right. Let's have a drink. It's getting on. We're going to get Jennifer soon. I'm going to put some pink on her hair. Like that. Just to give her some pink strands. Some glitter in her hair. So, yeah, I hope you're all having a good time. If you make uh, colouring videos and I'm not subscribed to you, or if you've got a colouring channel, leave your channel name, or to say I've got a channel, and I'll go and have a look to see if I'm subscribed because I like to subscribe to as many as I can so I can support you. Um, I, I'm going to say I don't always watch all the videos. It depends. I do like a colouring chart. I love a haul. Um, I love completed pages. Um, mainly because I like to see what people are using. I like to get ideas uh, of what I could use or what I would like to buy from hauls. And colouring charts, nice to, it is nice to catch up with people. So I don't tend to watch live streams because, especially if... Um, they're American, um, not because I don't like that sort of thing, I do, but being in the UK, um, I might miss the start of your live stream, oh I missed a bit, and then I would have to watch it later, which would mean me watching you talk to people all the time when I'm not part of the conversation, and I do find that frustrating with um, live streams. 
but that's okay. I mean, I also understand why people like them. Camera's gonna go off in a minute, then I'll put it back on while I'm just colouring in this square. But we're nearly done. Actually, I won't. I'll just finish this off the camera after now. So let me just show you what we've got before the camera cuts out. There we go. You will now see this again in my in my completed pages at the end of the month or the beginning of April. Quite happy. I am getting through the whips very, very slowly. But I will be back next week with another colour and chat whipping the whips. It might be Kobe Razan's. I've got one in one of his. I've got two or three in Alan Robert books. I'm not sure. I've got three Christmas ones, a New Year's one. I don't know what loads. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will see you very, very soon, I promise. Take care now, guys. Bye.